When a current carrying conductor interacts with the magnetic field, a force is produced on the conductor. We call this the motor effect, and is demonstrated here using a wire connected to a power source resting on top of a magnet. A DC motor is a machine which applies the motor effect to convert electrical energy into mechanical energy, and is used in most household appliances. To build our DC motor, we're going to use a 9 volt battery or a power pack and some neodymium magnets for our magnetic field source. These magnets form the stator, as they are stationary throughout the operation of our motor. To harness our current carrying conductor, which is insulated copper wire with enamel coating to prevent short circuiting, we're going to build an axle and an armature. I used a wooden dowel as my axle and attached some pieces of balsa wood on each side to form the armature. The motor effect formula shows us that to increase the force on the coil, we can wrap our wire around the armature multiple times. The armature and the axle together form our rotor, as they will be rotating in our magnetic field. Use sandpaper to strip 10cm of wire on each end of the armature, and then use aluminium foil to ensure a solid connection is made between the coil and the battery. Place the axle inside a stand, and then place the setup such that the armature is close to the magnets. Attach the battery to the coil, and a current will start to flow in this direction. According to Fleming's left-hand rule, a force should theoretically be produced on our armature in this direction, causing it to rotate. Let's see what happens. Because the direction of the current on either side of the coil is constant, the direction of the force on each side will also always be constant, causing the motor to just slightly wobble back and forth on its axis. To solve this, we tape the coils down and then use paper clips to station the battery terminals on either side of the axle. This forms our commutator and our brushes, a setup that automatically reverses the direction of the current flowing through the coil each half cycle of rotation, due to contact with alternating paper clips. Due to this, the direction of the force will also alternate at the axis, producing a constant rotation of our armature. So we've explained the working of a motor through the motor effect. Now we will analyse it through the principles of torque. After deriving its formula, we can see that torque is dependent on the angle between the magnetic field and the plane of the coil. Hence at this position, where theta is equal to 90, we can see that the torque will be a maximum, and it will decrease to zero every quarter turn when the plane of the coil becomes parallel to the magnetic field. The inertia of the coil helps it overcome this small gap, with the torque will then increase back to a maximum and help our motor rotate continuously. Therefore, a graph of the torque on our coil would look something like this. So we've explained the rotation of our DC motor coil using both torque and the motor effect. But Faraday's law of induction says that when there's a change in magnetic flux threading a coil, an EMF is induced in that circuit. In our motor, there is a change in magnetic flux, produced by the coil spinning around in the magnetic field produced by our magnets. Therefore, there must be an induced EMF in our circuit, separate to the voltage we've already supplied. But doesn't this mean that the total current in our motor will be more than what we started with? Isn't this clearly violating the law of conservation of energy, which states that energy can neither be produced nor destroyed, only transformed? Well, as a result of this, Lenz's law came about, which states that an induced EMF always gives rise to a current that creates a magnetic field that opposes the original change in flux through the circuit. Essentially, it dictates that the EMF generated in the motor will oppose the direction of the source EMF, causing the net EMF of the whole coil to decrease. This opposing voltage is called the back EMF, and it ensures that the mechanical energy of the coil is reduced by the same amount of electrical energy gained by the current, or in other words, energy is conserved. Back EMF depends on the speed of the motor. As the rotational speed of the motor increases, the rate of change of flux also increases, producing a larger back EMF which decreases the current running through the coil. When the magnitude of the back EMF is equivalent to the source EMF, the current running through the coil, which is ideally zero, is called the operating current, and the speed of the motor at this point is called the operating speed. The current of the armature can be quantitatively found through I is equal to V supply minus E back over the resistance of the motor. Back EMF and operating current become very significant in the working of a DC motor, as it allows the motor to become self-regulating. This essentially means that it allows the motor to draw just enough current to produce the torque required specific for that load. When the load on the motor is increased, the armature will spin more slowly, therefore reducing the back EMF and increasing the net current across the coil. This in turn will produce a larger torque on the motor, allowing it to do work on the load and increase the rotational speed of the armature. The opposite will occur if there's a load decrease on the motor, with the rotational speed of the armature again coming back to an equilibrium. This is how back EMF makes a DC motor a self-regulating mechanism. But if the motor spins too slowly, for example at the start when the motor is just turned on, or if the load placed on the motor is too high, the back EMF is minimal, and the net current across the coil remains high. This in turn produces a large amount of heat and may burn out the motor. To counteract this, a resistor with variable resistance is placed in series with the coil. The maximum amount of resistance is inserted when the motor is just starting off, and as the back EMF increases as the motor's speed increases, the starting resistors are cut out in successive steps until the motor reaches its operating speed. So this is how, through electric and magnetic interactions, a DC motor operates.